thank you so much, Javier and Katrina. And thank you guys for having us here. You're welcome. Know, putting us together. This is awesome. Um, do you want to introduce yourself first? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my name is Katerina Yanis. I work at the Perez Art Museum. I do the time-based art programming there. And I'm a native uh, Miamian. I was born and raised here. And then um, Javi and I actually met when we were kids. And then we re-met again as adults. So when I left for a long time, went to school, and then came back for this job. Uh, but we met, re-met as adults. So that's kind of a founding of this talk is um, is us deciding to come back to Miami. So yeah, like, <coughs> yeah. I mean, I, I came back here about two years ago, I believe, when I left high school, '96, uh, and uh, without any plans to come back. And I've come back here, um, basically, like amazed at how awesome Miami is. I what I do here is I've curated. I'm, I'm an artist. I run an art conservation studio, which where we conserve uh, painting. Um, it's run by Rustin Levinson. It's just great place and uh, it's given me a good perspective on what art collections exist here. Yes? I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. You can't hear me. So we'll try, we can, yeah, we'll try these guys. You can like even sit it yeah. down, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'll hold it like, how's that? Is that, that a little bit better? Is that better? Great. Um, so working at this space, I've seen a lot of what kind of art exists in Miami in terms of collectors as well as uh, um, what people bring in and, 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 and work as an artist, also seeing the kind of other world that exists amongst the artists in Miami. And I guess the idea of this talk was to sort of examine that and uh, the current state of art as it is today and the art scene here and also to see where it's going to lead in the future and how, as people who have just come back here and seen like this brand new energy that wasn't here at all when I left, um, sort of like navigate like what is happening and, and so on and um, yeah I mean when we kind of originally met on this topic it was actually I, can, I think I can project enough can everyone hear me yeah I can hear you okay because okay. I I That's really don't like using microphones, but um, so we met actually through an argument uh, that we were having about um, Javi was talking about a, a school of art in Miami, like a school of painting and some sort of like cohesion around that. And um, so, and maybe that's a good place to start and then yeah. we can kind of like sure. segue from there. So, um, so some of the stuff that he was saying was like, why is there not more attention being paid to Miami artists on a kind of national uh, or international kind of sphere? and because uh, he sees a cohesion between the artists. And I was arguing that in order for there to be cohesion, there needs to be a cohesion of ideology, not geography. So, and that's something that I struggle with um, in terms of a lot of the way that the language is positioned here for artists, in terms of using words like local, instead of using words just like artist, um, or, and then saying where you're based, which other kind of cosmopolitan cities of which we are one don't necessarily preface their artists by saying that they're <coughs> local to New York or local to Los Angeles. So um, I'm always kind of, uh, that's like a gripe that I have that I think that it would expand our, um, our own thinking if we could get beyond this like local um, mindset around the, un the unification of the art and instead qualify it through ideological movements. Um, and for me that's like a, a, something that I think is really lacking in Miami that would help that would be founding uh, a university at a really like, yeah, just a kind of like an art school beyond the amazing art high schools that we have here. There's not a lot of postgraduate programs with like at a, at a really high level that keep uh, the young, really talented, Miami-based or Miami-born artists in Miami. So right. that was kind of like where we started talking. So I'll let Javi talk and then and, we can open it up. And yeah, I mean, and that was the exciting idea of bringing this to the round table because they really love the idea of finding out from people who have been here and seen this place develop. Because what I've noticed coming back here is this really tight community of artists that I see forming into like, I mean, organically 
doing this idea of like a school or like this like because you go to events here and it's a lot of the same faces talking about like art together and I, and I imagine personally seeing this developing organically on its own as we all continue to stick together and work on our work on the side and come together as a community and I see that forming and I, I, I guess the debate also is how how do you move into a world where creating a university in Miami is a viable option because you do need people that will attend this school and it be this like like you can teach people will come and teach there that are going to be of, of like yeah. quality well that's an interesting thing and so like in terms of how Miami is developing and where the lacks are at this point in terms of having that rigorous graduate school I mean do you see that the way that Miami has proceeded to develop as like antithetical to to having like is it is there something with the, the zooming out of the bigger picture of the founding of Miami that yeah. is making it now difficult to somehow address those educational gaps well some of some of also we were talking about in the title for the talk cutting diamonds in the swamp um, when you think about the way that Florida was um, founded to do a kind of speculation of, of swampland um, and then, uh, and so a lot of developers coming in with kind of like short turnover goals of like how to make money fast is still really a lot of the, um, the kind of uh, prerogative that you see when you're driving around Brickell in downtown Miami with the new uh, developments there. So that's something I think to really consider is that developers have come in and made um, like areas like South Beach in the 90s and then now this downtown region um, like building these like condos for tourists more or for like it's, it doesn't seem like the um, the development is necessarily for the communities of people that already live here so that's something to think about is like how Miami is actually physically through construction developing and like where the money where the money is going, what, like what it's feeding, and how that's orienting, I think is like a good thing to look at. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like that development is also what we were talking about before is how they've been using the art community here to help gentrify those areas, which we've all been taking huge advantage of. Mm -hmm. And but that, as we as I've talked to people who were here in two thousand three, who were given like free studios and free galleries. And they were able to work and live there for several years before they're like, all right, thanks for hooking us up. You guys can go now. Mm -hmm. And then they now built it into what you see in uh, in uh, in design district. Uh, but now we have a situation where they're now developing more further north, Little Haiti, Little River, and now they're not even like giving free spaces. They're not charging. So, but they're still getting artists to come in and help gentrify the neighborhoods as they slowly build it up and make it a, a place that they can eventually like kick us out I think so and I guess the so I, I mean I think like if the goal is profit on the part of developers yeah. right and not necessarily like academic rigor or something like that then half <laughs> like I, I, I'd be great to like open this up and maybe hear from other people about their experiences maybe with kind of develop like the way that Miami is like physically developing um, does anyone yeah um, other than the traffic I just moved from New York about a year and a half ago, but I will tell you that there is a fervor about people moving to Miami. So it's going to be for the good of art because a lot of wealthy people are buying these condos and they're interested in buying art. In terms of like, and you think that those have like long staying committed? Uh, I don't think there's a lot going on. Right. As having a more a safer place for their families and themselves. And in this in this case, um, this is a complaint I, I hear a lot about uh, from gallerists and artists that getting collectors, people who buy art, to buy, I guess, primary market work here, like emerging artists, is a, an issue. Like that's one thing that I've I've been noticing, and and in my my job working with collectors who are treating their work and for resale, it's that work, like we have people from Venezuela bringing their collections in from Venezuela 
bring it here, have us work on it, and, and they're not really buying anything here. They're not. Go they're, they're looking for artwork elsewhere, and they're bringing the collections here, which is great on some level. But I feel like there's there's got to be something. Something needs to shift a little bit to create a little more confidence in the artists that exist here. Like I mean, that's the community that I'm like interested in seeing like grow. Is that yeah? talking about it or looking at it, actually saying, here's my credit card, here's cash, bam. You know, that, 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 that you know, it's, someone But that's what you're that saying, is that in Miami there. there's not that strong collector base as of well, yet. Yeah, it's developing, but it's true, not quite I, And I don't think the you hard quality. You disagree? I mean, there's a huge collector base. It's okay. a, that's no, no, a, that's I, I think there's a huge, huge collector okay. base here. I mean, no, great, yeah. I mean, okay. No, yeah, tell me. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, just in terms, I mean, I'm coming from Chicago, right. which is geographically, in terms of population, probably, it's the third largest city in the U.S., right? So there's a ton of people there, but no one, absolutely no one buys art right. there. You know what I mean? And the, there, so in terms of, like, if you're to break it down mm -hmm. per person, you know, like, there's a lot, the, collect, the collector base here is quite large, and I think the collector base also, I mean, granted, maybe we're, like, there's a certain, uh, it falls within a certain spectrum of collector base. I think they tend to support local artists greatly, you know? Mm -hmm. and maybe one thing that Katarina was uh, talking about is, or maybe indirectly talking about would be, uh, you know, how do we then align the local artists uh, mm -hmm. with a larger national, national international right. conversation so that then they can break this glass ceiling. Because I think the right. glass ceiling is a huge issue for artists. Uh, and maybe it is, uh, this In terms of it's an aligning through like, through ideology, right? You know, like, because I think we all see artists here, we're like, oh man, this person would be great with X person here, right. but for whatever, reason maybe it's geography or I don't know you know like or we just or, done it. or aligning with an artist completely <coughs> geographically elsewhere that well, has similar I mean. ideology right, right? so like Sorry, yeah funny. connecting the dots with like Miami based artists and artists living in Cairo or Paris or right. wherever the when the other I mean there's so many facets to this but one of them is press and journalism I think and getting like a lot of um the, get, the way that you get collectors to buy work is if there's a lot of press on that, you know, if there's like a, a momentum or some sort of like buzz on the artist, then collectors feel more secure to invest because it, in the yeah. end, a lot of this is about investment. And I think that like one of the things that I think about in this city is maybe short sighted investment instead of long term investment. So maybe if people want to maybe talk about that's where the swamp speculation thing hmm. came into my head is like, what are we really investing in here? But you think that short-sighted speculation uh, is put upon mostly local artists? I think it's like the way that the Protestant ethic is like really part of a New England ideology and like a hard work ethic. I think that a short-sighted speculation swamp thing might be part of the ideology that's in the... I'm just like positing this as like, yeah. a, as like a thing that could be part of a fabric of this. And then there's like also... Yeah, there's like a, many other facets, but that was like one of them that I was thinking about. Yeah, I agree. 
People well, can agree, agree disagree. I mean, for example, like, uh, and I had a great conversation with Amanda uh, uh, just about a week or so ago. It sounds to me like, for example, we talk, we talk about gentrification, and I believe that um, the whole idea of gentrification uh, can also exist in how we look at art. And the artists can be uh, very, I think artists can also uh, tend to uh, create that type of atmosphere as well, too. So, I I think what's happening in Miami is you know, extraordinary. You know, and depending on how, where you're coming from, if you're looking at it from like a perspective of like, you know, buyers and like you know, making money or a big uh, that's one thing. But if you're looking at it from pure sense of like art and what art is really trying to uh, convey, whether it's here in Miami or anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. that, that's another thing that we'll have to Totally. <laughs> yeah, I would like to say just for the record, like when I talk about the art market and, and talk about art, they are really different things. And I think that we're talking a lot about the art market side of things. This is in no way like, really a critique on the value of the intrinsic value of any actual art object or made by art. It's really more about the value placed on it by an infrastructure that gives it value commercially. Right. But this, this talk is funded by the Knight Foundation and I don't know if Yeah. The high level art scene that we are enjoying now is funded in large part because of very idiosyncratic but amazing sensibility of Knight Foundation, which is now run by transition panel. Foundation level support for arts supports not just visual artists painting something getting bought by a collector, but funds creation of art, temp you know, um, time based art. Art projects. So I think you're art talking about really high level art. a philanthropic culture also. Yeah. Miami yeah. doesn't hasn't had a philanthropic culture. Mm -hmm. Our arts community has been sustained for the last twenty five years by our county cultural affairs council. And now the Knight Foundation has taken it up another notch. We had a corporate foundation level for sponsoring the arts. For for sponsoring not just from the marketing. Right, right, right. But from a foundation level support, like the Knight Foundation, we had another one that was exponential. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that. I, I don't need to take okay. it. I, I can, <laughs> we came down here in 08, my wife and I. We came down here because of the art scene. We came to Art Basel, and we were just blown away by the whole community. So, um, and we belong to some new scene. Actually, I'm seeing something a little different than you are. I'm seeing a lot of interest in the art but I'm seeing it at the institutional level first. Mm. So we didn't know about Locust. I mean, when we found out about Locust, said, this is terrific. Let's come here because we can have an impact. We can have, this, this is about change. So I think it's happening. And, I, and, and as you get people coming down here, as we're alluding to, it's gonna happen more. But right. the same thing for them. They don't know the community. Right. So one of the things, I, as I was listening, you know, the automobile has an association. Sorry, say that again? They have an association. Ooh. Maybe we need an artist association for local artists, maybe centered, connected <coughs> with the galleries to get the local artists out, but mm -hmm. not as local artists, just as artists. Right. As you're to know, but at right. their own, on their own talent level. That's the role of the gallerist. That's the role, of, I mean, that's really the role of the gallerist, right? Right. You know, so it's like, if, like, if your gallerist isn't doing it, well then, I don't know. I mean, I guess- To create community around your artist. The, the, yeah. I mean, if you yeah. can't do that, then you've got a major problem in your mm -hmm. business, right? Mm -hmm. So, but it, it, the good part about Instagram and all this is like this flattening of, of hierarchy, right? So, I mean, I think we've seen a mm -hmm. ton of the past 12 months. But you understand that, because I know you do, but a lot of gallerists may not. And part of what you're saying is you don't have as strong of a gallery program here. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are young galleries, 
Mine would not withstand it. Excellent. <laughs> no, but you, no, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm French, so I've been here for two years and a half, and I came here studying a Bachelor of Fine Arts. Okay. And uh, I am asking myself where I could do a master, but I'm never thinking about Miami. Right. Okay. So I think that you. I think the American way they always talk about money, market, collectors, but that's not the problem. The problem is the level of education, yeah. the quality, and uh, if you don't have any. Uh, center for education where international artists where a Japanese guy will mm -hmm. come here for a, a, a master, you will never have this. Where do they go in the States? They go to LA, they go to Berlin, they go to London. They don't go to Paris because in Paris we don't create it. We don't have, we have the same problem. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really there where we can find some. I, yeah, I would say that my, like specifically my passion would be that to put resources towards founding a university, but I actually want to bring Jean into this conversation because um, because uh, one model of one model is to found an accredited university that takes a lot of capital and resources and a lot of stuff. And then another model that is like, I'm not saying it's not as difficult, but um, but that has been done in other cities is to do postgraduate programs and uh, and Cannonball is spearheading one now, so if Jean could talk about that. Sure. Uh, Here. Sure. So, I think that we're not looking to be a university in this sense, or an MFA program. I think Cannonball works, the way we like to talk about it is work through deficits, or addressing deficits. And one of the deficits here that we keep hearing is that, um, formal institutions don't have very active visiting artists, visiting critics, visiting writer programs. So we just, um, we're just looking to absorb that deficit, right? So we're not looking to be a formal program, we're not a skill-based program, we're not a degree-granting program. We are just uh, a program that's looking to render more robust and dynamic discourse around art production. Um, and that's, that's, that's it. I mean, there's, there's not much more to say about it. Can I you think. maybe tell people like practical things like the title of the program, how to sure. enroll, when it... Yeah, so the program is called the Research Art Dialogue. Uh, it was piloted last fall. You can just go on our site. We take 10 full-time students per semester. Uh, it's cannonballmiami.org. So we take 10 full-time students. Cannonballmiami.org. Yeah. Okay. We take 10 full-time students every semester, which means that they're expected to partake in everything of that semester. And then every course we have can absorb 10 auditing students. Where do these students come from, typically? From like... They can come from... from yeah, like thus far they've been local. Okay. And um, so I think it's targeted at this kind of BFA to early professional group, but that hasn't been necessarily... I mean, that's been the core of it, but we've had outliers, we've had someone who retired from corporate America and decided yeah. to kind of come back, this sort of thing. Um, and so another thing we try to do, another thing that is really important to the program, I think, which I think relates to some of the stuff we were talking about before, is that we're really interested in the program itself, generating new knowledge about the city. I think one of the problems tonight, for me, has been that um, there's been a lot of talk about markets and gentrification and uh, I feel, and this is a very general statement, that people in the cultural sphere in the city have no idea how gentrification and markets work in the real world and so they want to partake in something that, that, that there's no ready available knowledge of, you know, for them uh, and then they don't, they don't complement this lack of access to that kind of knowledge by generating a kind of horizontal culture mm -hmm. where different kind of grassroots institutions can kind of uphold each other. Mm -hmm. um, so they can't, so they're not equipped to partake in these kind of massive forces of capital. Mm -hmm. And then they're also not willing to create a grassroots kind of community from the ground up. Well, so I think it's. I have a bit of a question. Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, because I was, I was a, bit of, a bit concerned that you're following the university model as far as disseminating information, given the fact 
fact that we've gone through this student debt uh, situation that we're going through right now. And uh, I'm a little concerned that following that model, I mean, right now it's affordable to take these classes to educate. Our classes? The RAD? The RAD, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, so. Yeah, right slightly now, it's different point. The RAD classes. I mean, you're charging a fee to take these classes. Yeah, so, so RAD is based on a free school model. And the only reason we charge is as a buy-in, because uh, I think we're we're a city of events. Yes. And so everyone will show to the first class, and by a third class, we'll have half our our student group gone. So we just have a tuition, which is two fifty per semester or fifty per class, and it's just a buy-in, right? It's a kind of with the idea that it's going to be phased out if if we feel it's sustainable that we can keep a class full. Yeah, because that's the thing I was concerned about. I don't know if it would be phased out or mm -hmm. it would be perpetuated. Yeah, it's not. I mean, at those prices, it's not really a significant revenue stream for us. No, of course not. But if it's successful, I was concerned that maybe it might lead to a business model that could mirror the one of universities. <coughs> increase tuition fees in order to, you know, bring in better, you know, educational platforms or what have you. You know, name your reason. But that's what I was about following that same model, uh, getting into larger institutions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, I, I don't know what the trajectory of that plan is. I suppose because um, I, I didn't know you were gonna interest in phasing it out per se. Yeah. Okay. So I uh, like to. Uh, Yeah, I feel like I've been hearing the past few, the uh, past year, a lot of good things about FIU as uh, a master's program, and I'm wondering if, if there's, you can talk about why, if there's anything that you know, notice has changed or evolved in that program that's made it evolve. Yeah, how do you like your experience in grad school at FIU? Um, be honest now. Walking <laughs> <laughs> Closer. Get into the mic. Into the mic. Let me get you back this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the spaces he was talking about that our campus has is in Lincoln Road. Um, it's the Mega Beach Urban Studio, so it's like a project space. Um, and Dr. Alpesh Patel, he's secured grants from Mega Beach for us to use that space um, to bring in visiting artists and curators, um, critics. So bi-weekly we have a public lecture there. Well, that's, I mean, something I definitely want to address here is attendance in large at events. It's something that, yeah, so if you could kind of open that conversation, then I want to bring it to 
other spaces? I, I think um, like the city of Miami has just given us a lot of funding, um, and it's been great, like the different people that we could bring in. But yeah, it's been kind of disappointing yep. having such strong personalities with not a lot of interest. Why do you think, from your experience, that attendance is low? Um, in Virginia, so parking is hard. There's always like um, ten different things going on at once, so you have to pick which you know, which would be best for you. Should be one institution. Uh, Florida International University. On Miami Beach. Yeah, it's in the Fort. You mean the Wolfsonian? No, no, it's a separate building. Um, in Lincoln Road, it's the fourth floor of the Four Twenty building. It's yeah, I mean. Above the casino. I would say accessibility. Yeah. 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 Well, no, separate from the arch. Space. I want to request the student I did. By the way, this is this is exact. This is, typ <laughs> this is typical. The real the real answer is nobody knows about what's going, going on there. Because I, I, I was going to say, in sorry, go ahead. Excuse me. Nobody knows. We would go to all these events. I only found out about Cannibal about a couple of months ago. Yeah. And I'm in this. I'm learning. I'm, I want to be in this community. We're in this community. I told you that. But John, I think that's, <laughs> it's even larger than that because Infoculture was launched, say, about a year ago, and it's been a really great That's site. a website that you go ahead. Yeah, it's a website that <laughs> compiles all of the cultural events. Oh. And not all, a lot of. Which one? Infoculture. Cultural events that happen within non for profit spaces, mm -hmm. I would say. That's probably how it's going to be. Do they post the events? I don't know. Yeah, not, basically, if you're for profit, you you can't participate. But if it's not for profit, then I think you're, it's open. But I think that's been a great website. But I think maybe like, and this might be like hyper speculative, which for the topic, I think it's apropos. You know, maybe it's our relationship to say like something like Art Basel. Like our engagement with art is a sort of like 10 second pass by, right? I think a lot of people are interested in the arts. I don't think a lot of people are invested in the arts right. down here. You know, it's just like, oh, like it's sexy to say I collect art, which means like you buy a raffle ticket for you know to buy it. you take it like a three hundred dollar piece or something. But like I don't know, does that make you a collector per se? And, like, yeah, and even though parking I'm sure is an issue, I definitely like traveled far and wide to go see certain people speak throughout the world, you know? So yeah. it's like, you, it's, a, it's about priorities and how much dedication you really have to something, but you're totally right. Yeah. I don't know about your program, yeah. right? A yeah. lot of people don't know about the programming I'm doing at the museum, like, and these are like really institutionally sat, yes. like, yeah. Yeah. like it's, you know, these aren't like small grassroots organizations hidden in the middle of nowhere. These really are like the- You have to know everything. You don't have to know everything, but- And we probably shouldn't have enough that we don't know everything. That's true, but like I, I went to New York and like, oh, there's a yeah. tonight. Like, oh, well, there's eight more movies. I like, right? How do you like? And it's also kind of kind of want to do nothing thing. sometimes, but yeah. But you know, as big as New York is, they publicize more, and yeah. you could find out. And Go ahead. I'm telling you, down here, they don't. This is more of a question: Is there less like, collaboration between the institutions here than in other places? I think that the I personally, I feel like I I. In communication with a lot of <coughs> institutions, and not, you know, I would say like, t to my own def default, I'm not with FIU, so I, and I would like to be, but you know, Laura, who runs the Rhythm Foundation, we've collaborated with a bunch, and um, but again, collaboration doesn't require. I didn't know about FIU being across the street from my office, <laughs> and so this weekend, I didn't know about Ken involved until my friend. Uh, so, yeah, well, so what, the thing is that like. I did, I had no idea. And the way, and the way, as, a, as an example, you were an example, for example, today. Uh, well, this is um, spring break. So on the beach. Spring break, like, like not the like, 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 like the yeah, okay. the old school. <laughs> 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 and, I, and I'm an artist who just came down from um, uh, I want to say Virginia. Anyway, we were talking, and so I told her about uh, the urban studio. Is really, where is it? So, I think this is good because I mean, I'm not the person that I mean, I'm very grassroots. I like really talking to people about this is what's going on here, this is what we're doing. Yeah, so it seems to be very word of mouth. I wanted to, do you have something to say back there or no? I, I, I Mm -hmm. So it's always social media, social media or email marketing, which is free. 
to yeah. do a radio act, two thousand dollars. That's my for what like four eight artist presentations yeah. on rarities. Yeah. I think um, media buying are and how fractured our media outlet landscape is in this huge tri-county cultural landscape. It's it's really difficult to be heard of real money, which is clubs or major league backed institutions or um, all of these touring pop culture things. I, well, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I just wanted to add to that because that what you're talking about is exactly something that I was further cemented for me. Last week I was invited to be on this like Nike panel where they were coming here because they're doing a conference in December and they wanted to talk to different people about kind of how the word spreads or where people congregate here or whatever, right? And the people that they invited to talk were mostly party promoters. And there was, mm -hmm. and, which was really interesting for me because I was like, this city, I'm learning, and, you, and feel free anyone to disagree with me, is not one where communication happens through journalism, but through party promotion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? So, so and, and, but like, if, you know, and instead of maybe having like a judgmental, like, uh, attitude towards that, thinking more like, okay, well, how can we use that to our advantage? Like, I'm ready to hire some party promoters to do some, pub some publicity to get people to come to the museum to events because like I'm I just we just launched this music and art program and so it's like very catered to a demographic we're gonna have Trina who's a rapper yes. at the museum that is like very much like for an audience that's not even has no like zero idea about contemporary art but you know there's like reasons there's a lot of reasons why I think it's important to to like angle it that way anyway but More so people like to party yeah. In this, pr but but I wouldn't I wouldn't say that that's a universal conceit. I think that that's something that's specific to the city. It's going to be to contextualize the art. I mean, it's going to be going to do something like a Reno Arabic. It's not. It's not. It's going to be like that kind of thing. No, it's it's actually not going to be like that kind of thing. What's that? It's celebrity kind of like party atmosphere and also. Like it kind of clouds the, the I think that's a totally fair perspective, but I just my but I don't necessarily think that working with like really quality rappers is a, the same as as thinking about it as like a celebrity um, uh, whatever that well, is it, about. The of what <laughs> yeah, it's I don't. I'm not going to. History of actually a recent history of that actually happened. I mean, as recent as like last week, you know, they're writing about it. And you have Jerry Salt saying that, you know, what the hell is going on right now? And New York, that's a big deal. You know? Yeah, but I'm also, in, I'm also interested in a populist approach to programming where you're not only catering to people that have a really in-depth knowledge well, of contemporary it's art. It's about populist, it's about educating the populist. I know, but if you, if you pair, if you can, sorry, because it, it's like, if you can um, invite an artist who, I invited the video artist, not the, who's Jacoby Satterway, if, if any of you are familiar, and he chose to work with her, so it's like, it's a platform for an artist, and they chose that. They chose that, like that person to be in their video because their video is about specifically those ideas. I don't think that you can like relegate it to the same thing as like us trying to like um, just use the celebrity to get people in the door. I will say that I do think that we should put it on like hot or whatever, 99 jams yes. and 97.3, yes. and you should get every teenager from like Broward County down to come to this museum and have the ability like have it giving them access through someone like Trina who who has a strong fan base that isn't necessarily contemporary art is a really great way to like show people something another world that's not their own. Well I think what you're saying is like kind of bringing it back to the original question of this talk which is Everyone agrees that there are things happening in this community in terms of the contemporary art scene, but what we don't have a, a, a consensus on or what we're really thinking about now is how we leverage that kind of energy in the context and the environment that we're now in. So right. it's very strange and very interesting that we might, you know, we're promoting, um, we're promoting an intellectual engagement with the arts through um, the framework of a party planner, but that actually happens to work really well here, but I guess the question for artists in our community at this juncture is, what is now, what are the next steps that we, that we can actually get, lead to a more meaningful, deeper engagement with the arts on their own terms? Right. I want to say something. Uh, 
So I, I, I find this like good parallel between what you brought with the diamond and the swamp, because I feel like that kind of like, you know, says, you know, a diamond in the rough in a way. Yeah. And I, so, you know, somewhat that's more beautiful than, um, than, you know, refined diamonds. So I feel like, so there's, you can go into a gallery and you can just see that's a refined diamond, you know? Yeah. Cookie cutter diamond. You're married to this gallery. You know? right. <laughs> so like, you know, so you can go into those things. So there's nice leverage here right now at this time being in Miami that you can kind of see that. And I think we should appreciate that because, you know, it, it might change in a way that we might not like. For example, you know, like the Everglades are in peril at the moment. Like in October, they might build a whole agricultural place right below Okeechobee that will be like, you know, sugar cane. And that will destroy the whole flow of the water because they relates. So there's a bigger picture. <laughs> but, you know, the diamond in the swamp, I think, is something that should live. And I think like, that's uh, what I think. So you're saying uh, the roughness, the rough hewn homespun quality, <clears throat> if you will. There's, of there's, there's a game. You gotta like bounce off the walls to get to the point. So I'm not disagreeing. I think you should totally put out an iron six. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, like, you should also appreciate what we have now. To right, see, and, see and I think that's, that's a know? big part of Miami that makes me so. I, the, the, the novelty of Miami is that, yeah, it's just like a recreational based city with a lot of people that are out here just trying to have fun and party and everything. But I've always noticed that with all that sort of like lowbrow stuff, it's always brought up this really amazing quality. Like, I do agree the art here is amazing, and I think it's often reactionary to the sort of, like, uh, I don't know, party-style, like, backdrop of Miami. Like, there's the rebellion against that. Well, yeah, but Matt has just pointed out that the Everglades is in danger in reference to that. There's the largest mall in the nation being constructed not that far from the Everglades. You know, it's being... Right. You know, it's been proposed in the Miami Herald. Yeah. But to get, you were saying it's not right. in reaction to? Well, no, I mean, it, it very likely is a reaction, but I don't think, uh, well, if Miami is, it is a novelty, but it yeah. also isn't, you know? And well, how do you do? Uh, because, oh, uh, uh, so I was saying uh, Miami very much is a novelty, but uh, it also is a real place to live in. And we have beach, and we have leisure culture, and we have leisure, and we have this downtime, but that downtime is like our time. You know, so it's like where, I don't know, where our idea production happens, it's where, like, where I live, you know, like, it, it's what informs us, and it's, it's not, uh, it's not LA, it's not Paris, it's not whatever, it's, it's what we have, and maybe that's, maybe the best plan is to, Embrace that. those. Yeah, no, I fully agree. Yeah, and, yeah. and maybe that landscape uh, doesn't give way for an MFA program or, or See, anything other than Power 96. Or, you know, like that's just what Senesa so hangs. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I hate to burst everybody's party bubble, but um, <laughs> I think what's going to happen eventually uh, is uh, we're just going to um, slip back into. Um, I guess what, what was it? maybe the, the 50s, the 40s. Uh, the minute that they open up uh, Cuba, Miami Beach is going to be just uh, Man, you know just a shit suit as it is right now. The shit's it's flooding. It's you know it's a problem. It smells like crap most of the time. Um, I don't know. It's just you know the, the party will be moved. There's no doubt. Um, the artist community here will you know hopefully continue to thrive as I've seen it thrive in the last five years. I've seen it huge difference in terms of, 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 of the institutions that are being funded by, in my opinion, the kind of crooked foundation, crooked foundations, I won't mention any names, but I always see money going into these places where, you know, they just typically go. Um, and then also, I, oft, I often have conversations with some people that, you know, can and should do something and invest into education. Um, and I think Cannonball, ever since Gene got there, I mean, it's just that, that whole program is just like, it's just, it's just, you know, blown me away. I haven't had a chance to, to commit to any of the classes yet because, um, you know, I have, I have to pay the rent. Uh, so I'm working, so I can't commit to that. 
kind of thing, which I would like to, but I often talk to those with, with, with power and money and influence, perhaps, um, to kind of put their money where their mouth is, or vice versa, and kind of support the community in, in education. So that means pro providing a platform where you can bring um, um, you know, intellectuals in, or you know, artists that can kind of affect others on a, on a kind of a thinking kind of way. But then one thing that I find really lacking in this, in this place is a facility. Is there's nowhere to make shit. You know, there's a swamp space. I don't want to go there. You know, I'm sorry, but Oliver is a great guy, but it's just I just don't have any desire to work with him. I mean, he's just kind of been here forever, and it's just like this. He's the go-to guy. It's like go to Oliver, go to Oliver. Get him. It's like no. Could could we maybe have or find somebody to actually create a situation where I don't know if, it, if any of you have ever been to the Anderson Ranch Art Center in Snowmass Village in Colorado, but that. I keep on telling anybody that's interested in opening up a residency program is an amazing model. Mm -hmm. Half the time it's a school, which it brings artists from all over the world to their facility, and they teach. That brings students from all over the world, and they learn, they exchange. No one's willing to commit to that. I mean, even like, I mean, just you look in the last couple of weeks, there's all this like big talk about all this money being funneled into these, you know, these, these institutions of, of just like looking at shit but no one's interested in making it. Why isn't this money going to any of the universities here? Which one? Money. Five million so, here and there. Five mil there, you five mil here, ten mil there. I want to yeah. hear it's from, like, from That's him a lot of bathroom. cash, and it could actually start some really interesting, I think there's a lot of hungry people and a lot of willing people to participate. Yeah. It's just that no one's been given that opportunity yet because no one understands the value of it. And I keep on telling these people, go, go, go spend a summer at the ranch. Go spend a winter at the ranch, and you'll see the value of that kind of exchange, and also um, the facility. It's important. I mean, whether you're someone who's in social practice, that's fine. I mean, I remember meeting some girls that uh, were doing a residency program at the ranch. There's an airport like five minutes away. You know what they did for their project? They met very wealthy people, and they asked them, they said, can we take your jet to wherever you're going next? And they did. They kind of got in trouble for it, but it's kind of amazing. <laughs> they, they were supposed to go there and make shit, but they didn't. They, you know, they used what was around them, and there's a lot of that kind of money here. I lived in Palm Beach for like a couple of years, and they have a wonderful little place in, in West Palm uh, called the Armory Arts Center, and it's the same thing. It's just like residencies. Don't doctors do that? And I'm just like, they just have no clue of what the value of, of educating not only uh, the artist in your community, but the people that are interested in looking at it, like this whole like idea of parties and promoting, it's just like everybody just wants to go there and get fucked up with free booze. <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't, they don't pay attention to what's in front of them. They don't want to listen to some guy talking like me, like almost kind of like, kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, trying to rub out their existence because it's vapid and, and kind of just. You know. I, I think what you're saying points to like uh, maybe a, another topic that I've been thinking about, which is a splintering of interests among the art community in terms of like what it is that people are interested. Like, there's a lot of like, I'll just start my own thing in that attitude of like self pioneering which can be really productive but can also be debilitating in terms of like having a community come together and pool around supporting uh, a singular thing and having larger attendance right like you want a work a workspace for artists somebody else wants a universe like there's just a lot of different things to kind of fund well, that's based what a university on is if you right. go, if you yeah, go yeah, to the yeah. university, right, you've got right. to drive like how far to get to that one there where Pearls used to be too. I mean, it's just like it's But ridiculous. he goes to FIU, so he would say, he would yeah, argue... Let me, let, me, let, me, let me respond to uh, Amy up here. They're great this time. But you know what? I have an apartment on this name Boulevard. I'm, that's set up as like artists coming together, dialoguing, showing their work, and having discussions about what's really important and how we can change this and I think that that's one of the most important things that we all have as artists, as curators, to, to take it to like sort of like that grassroots kind of like a, a level of understanding that if we're looking for like the uh, kind of a, the euphoric like place where we're, we're all going to like find you know, the solutions well, the answers to like, how things are going to be in the art world here in Miami, 
then maybe what we should be doing is like looking at you know what we have and how we can use what we have. And that's why I use my example as my apartment on on this case Boulevard, you know, where it's like we need to create these uh, all like all these like little hubs of like art all over the city of Miami. Fine, I mean fine. listen who wants to bring it back to the ranch? That used to be a goat book. They started that shit in the 60s. So it takes time, there's no doubt. But the unfortunate reality is, is you live in the magic city. You're talking about people coming in with lots of money and throwing it at you know wherever they want, how they want, and then dipping. But I would have to say, I think there might be some long-term um, view now starting to happen. But it's, as the typical saying goes, it's baby stuff. You know, no one's willing to really to really take a leap, and as they should. I mean, they're taking leaps to build these massive, you know, buildings that are empty most of the time. You know, it's just like, what the fuck? I'm sorry. Pa patience is definitely going to be key to all of our. I think. Uh, I think we just need to get angry and start yelling. At well, an <laughs> anger, <laughs> anger is totally one approach. I think that. I mean. So one of the things that I think about a lot too is how to parasite off of models that are successful. Like, so if you look at developers or you look at. Um, Whatever uh, institutions that you have a pro or like models that you have like that you take issue with, how do you trick those in that model into? You just have to show them the money because that's what they're there well, for. Well, I I, really I kind sad. of think that there's like ways that we can be smart about understanding the way that infrastructure in this city actually works. Like getting a grip on the fact that there isn't a New York Times here or that people aren't reading the paper in a way to get the listings in that way and then maybe we do have to use uh, like alternate means or whatever. Go ahead. I think he has a very good point. I, I like what he spoke about. I think what you, there are residency programs here in the city, very reputable ones, but they're housing people not from Florida. They're inviting people outside of Florida, which is sad. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think it's sad. I think it's a really smart model. Oh, okay. They're 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 okay. smart. They're keeping it closed doors and they're putting their money because they're what they're doing basically is they're providing an artist with a. a, a I know a couple of them. Um, I've talked to, like to some of these people and they're like, yeah, you know, I'm from so and so and I'm like working at the space and there's all this like money being thrown at them. But what's happening then is then you know during that kind of crunch time, Basel comes around. I mean they're. It's it's a market. Whether you like it or not, it's no, not. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. I, I can see the, the positive side of it, okay. But what I'm saying about what you're yeah. saying, which is a very good point, is since you, the curators, the people that run these organizations here in Miami, you have the power to, to maybe speak to the people that have the money, like the Knights Foundation, to maybe create a, a, a studio program a large program that would be reputable, that would be like an open call according to the quality of the work, and give people. Well, what if, any, if anybody has one point five million creator. dollars, I've got the perfect building for the <laughs> residency program. Nice. Okay. Go, okay, the person in the yeah. back has been waiting for a while. Do you want a mic? <laughs> um, maybe. No, 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 no.
see that there's a whole possibility of creativity that is, is happening. And I suspect that like they, Kendall will have progressively, like, you know, kids 18 years old, what classes do you want to take? Oh, I want to take art. Mm -hmm. You know, but, but I want to do that spray paint thing that those kids are doing all that crap and making money off of. And I think you're going to have, like, used to be one kid, I think you're going to have a hundred kids. So where where are they going to go to school after that? And, and I think that instead of, like, trying to get those kids to bam, I think bam, I, I think they're going to do it on their own. And then bam's going to be looking for them out in West Kendall. And, and it's going to be like, fuck, that, that, that's, that's, like, the mighty way to, you know, do it the wrong way and then somehow be validated. Or as opposed to, I, I always looked at Miami through like a, a New York prism. Uh -huh. You know, it, it was always you had to get validated outside of Miami to be anything here. Oh, I, I remember when there's four galleries and, and 40 people at most, and they stayed there the whole fucking night because there was nothing else to do. Right. And, you know, when the beer ran out, it was gone. I, I have something to say after that because, you know, I was, I was painting a mural at the Jose Diego Middle School. And you know it was it was beautiful because all the kids they were you had you had the bad kids you had the good kids you had the really sweet kids you had the kids that wanted to steer spray paint cans and and sign on their on their wall and then you had to confront them and be like no you can't do that you know <laughs> and, but they were just middle school kids but you know so it was beautiful to kind of see that their interest kind of blossomed as that whole project went on and I say firsthand <coughs> that like. Those kids are, are like, <coughs> really happy, at this. but uh, you know, unfortunately, we did this project so that they could get a you know teacher funded to have that work at school. But those kids that are there right now won't see anything of that as of yet. Uh -huh. I will say that um, Pam has an education in initiative where they're serving all the third grade students in all of Dade County. Um, so that it's kind of part and parcel with what you're talking about. We don't know yet what's going to happen to that generation of kids that are, we're exposing to contemporary art at such a at young what age. Grade? Third, Third grade. graders. That's too young. It's just like daycare. There's a there's also there's, 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 no there's a, there's a if you look at there's a lot of education programs for teenagers and other. I'm just saying that we're serving every single third grader in the county, so it's a wide breadth. Uh, there's other teen programs too. Like there's like a ton of after school, over town after school I programs. Right. Okay, but anyway. I think but, the point is, is that the youth will make their own system. And I think that, you know, I, I mean, I think it's going to be something new that we can't really fathom right now. Right. And, you know, there might be some somebody that doesn't know that much about what we know about in the art world that's, that's going to be selling the shit out of somebody's paintings and then the art world's going to catch up. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to trying to catch up to their world. I, I, I mean, it's always been art to grow, it just wasn't paying out. I, I teach grade I teach grade nine sculpture at the New World and I hang out with these 14, 15 year old kids. And when we do um, the juries, uh, we ask them like, what do you want to do? Uh, you know, mostly their language that they use is they want to be successful. And you're like, okay, so what does that mean? And it's like it always winds up being money. Period. <laughs> You know, and then I'm only there to try to burst that bubble and say, well, that's just not it. Can you, you know? talk about, like, the, it about with New World? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> can, you, can you talk it a little really bit? It truly isn't. Can you talk a little um, bit about New World? Can, yeah, I want to, I actually, I'm, I'm really interested. I like interested. grade nine, so well, it's just a very brief, I'm, one, I'm only one day a week, and, like, the last, I haven't been there for three weeks, so. <laughs> I teach 10th <laughs> grade. You oh, teach it. Because I'm, 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 what do you call that, an adjunct. Like, they see you showing at art fairs, and they see that as, like, a role model. They don't really give a shit of what I do. They're just like. Yeah, but, like. You, they don't. They're just like, they're 14. They're they, 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 they have a very narrow view of the world. You try to kind of you know, show them all this stuff, but, you know, their hormones are raging, and the language that they use is very much about that little thing that's in their hand, that they're really. Do you want to talk about your experience at New World too, maybe, sure. as a comparative? Yeah, yeah. Um, He's grade 10. I'm grade 10, so again, injuries, we asked them, what, so what are you going to do with this art career? And a lot of them said that, like, and I had a lot of them say, like, well, I can't be an artist because 
I think if my parents have told me that I don't, make, they, they won't make enough money. Mm -hmm. So I have to go be. It. They won't make enough money. They won't make enough money. So I'm going to be a veterinarian also, mm -hmm. or I'm going to be an accountant, right? Um, and there, that's already there are ways that's already in, are right. That's already ingrained in yeah. that reality in the, has has bit them. Or, yeah, I mean, I, my niece who's not even an artist. She's in a magnet school at 11 years old. That's the first one she's wondering. There's no way I'm going to make money off this. This is a dumb. Right. It's a, I think it's a reality of living in society to be concerned with that if you're an artist or whatever. If they, like, they have enough of an awareness of what the art market is already at that young of an age, then they have to think about how that is that they're going to support themselves and a family potentially in the future. Right, but that's not to say that half the state of Texas is putting all their eggs in the basket that their son's going to be a professional football player. Right. Or like every kid in the ghetto is going to be a rapper or a basketball player. But you think so? You don't think like there's that. a supportive community here for it to just to be an artist within the new world's well, look at economy? That. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Look at that magic show. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I think there's pipe dreams in any of these situations, and like being a successful artist is just as hard as being anything, anything else. Anything yeah. yeah. So. I well, disagree with that. My God. Really? It's easier to be uh, well, uh, Please do elaborate. I mean, uh, to be a <laughs> successful real estate uh, person is it easier to do? Oh, Hell yeah. Yeah, the percentage is a successful artist. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I think that the chances of being a successful artist and making a living off of your career is probably something like 0.0001%. I mean, that should make everyone turn themselves off. <laughs> yeah, but it, in yeah. terms of the scale you, of perfection. <laughs> Where did your daughter go? She went to Dash for his No, oh, oh, but I mean, like, after. She went, she went to New York, like, oh, the the well, I was going to say, I think that Cooper oh, Union has the highest matriculation the rate from yeah. New World. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But then 10 years from now, they're all going to move back to Miami when they realize... No, no, no my point is that sucks. New World... <laughs> New World... Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they won't. They are... No, what I'm saying is that Co Cooper Union, for anyone who may not know, is probably the best art, art school, art university in the country. And it's free. No, and it has. And it, wait, it's free. Free. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. But, it's but, not but, but, but the but the point is that it has one of the highest matriculation rates from a high school, New World in Miami. Right. A lot of kids from Miami are going to the best yes. un art university right. in the country. So, so are amazing. And so I feel exactly. like as they grow up, there's going to be a need. It's going to be a so what would, what, for, how, Right. So how could we potentially exactly. or think about well, keeping those kids here? Sorry, I want to get your comment. But why, yeah. why can't they like, about the, invest in this city? About the students leaving. Okay. I grew up in Miami. Actually, I have a lot of friends that went to New World but, uh, when it first opened, and we all went to Maryland Institute, Cooper Union, Pratt, we named it. But we're all back. Yeah. Right. We all came back. That's great. Few right. stayed in New York, but went to New yeah, York. we came back. A lot of us did come back. Okay. I mean, I went to Smith College, and then I went to Bard for my master's. You went to Cooper. I so yeah. I went to but, but I only can I just say for the record I only came back actually because I was never going to come back to the city. <laughs> or I really wasn't. Was for because there was there wasn't anything for me. I mean I have my family. Weather. My mother's here. No, it wasn't for the weather. I wouldn't. I really wouldn't have come back if there if this. And I'm not trying to be like the museum's the best thing ever, but. This is like, but this opportunity at this museum was on par with any job I could have gotten at any other museum elsewhere. So it's a huge thing, I think, to have. That's yeah, one. Have, that's yeah, only one of those things. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, the accessibility. The accessibility. So, uh, as far as them meeting, as that's not It's just starting. It's changing, but it's more like the baby. Right. It's a lot of, and I, and I have to say, in terms of the attendance thing, and the reason that I bring it up, not to like scare everyone here, but like, if if we organize programs at the museum, right, and people don't show up to them, they won't keep happening. So it's like there has to be support by 
the people that are here if they want to keep seeing this city grow and change. And so I think the onus in the end is on everyone in this room and elsewhere to like start showing up for things that they want to see happening, which I know from a lack of communication standpoint makes it really difficult. It's a, there's a lot of apathy. Yeah, the, no, there is. There's a there's a, a great deal of ap of apathy, and I think that that's something about changing like a mentality of leisure, which I understand the ways that it's really positive in terms of like brainstorming for oneself or something. That's right, you said it. Yeah, but it is present, and it, and that leisure mentality can sometimes segue into an apathetic. But it's changing. Thing. I think. Yeah. Of that. So, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, there's a lot of pioneering that everyone in this room needs. Yeah, we're, 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 we're not in the beginning of that. Um, I know that legislation says that whenever uh, a public building is made, uh, there's money set aside for public art. Ooh. You mentioned something about the developers. Is there money set aside when creating a building? You know what? Just um, public buildings. Just public, not, yeah. Not, yeah. You have to be very not, not, not private you buildings, but public. You have to be yeah. very yeah. careful yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, you have to be very careful with that. I'm sorry. Ma'am, I'm going to take your comment after Sinessa, so you're next after Sinessa. Now, you bring up a very interesting point. Um, I've just recently had the opportunity to, to accept um, two proposals for some public artworks. Um, but I've had conversations with other people that have lived in other cities, and uh, they're like, "Like, what's up with this like Miami Day? It's like, it's it's not a public call; it's a selection committee. So there is somebody that wanders through and says, oh, "I like this artist, this artist, this artist, this artist. Let's bring them in, and they'll, you know, we'll pay them 500 bucks, and you know, they'll do something, and you know." We'll pick them and whatever the budget is, and we'll work it out. They take eighteen percent. Is there for public buildings or? Yeah. So I I don't know what it is, and I often have a tendency to bite the hand that feeds me. But I'm, I'm going to keep it short <laughs> and just say I'm grateful for the fact that I was chosen. But it seems a little fishy. But then again, we're in Miami, and it's a banana, banana republic, so it's a little. Exactly. You know, I mean, this is Miami. It's, it's Miami. It's you know, hey. I, I think know. you it's, bring up a really good point, though, because I, we, I think Javi and I both have a real um, stake in this conversation, having like positive or optimistic uh, goal setting for everyone in the room so that uh, we all know what the problems are. I think it's important to identify them, but I think we'd like to take the next 15 minutes, maybe, that we have, right? This ends around 30, to talk about potential, um, like, the things that people can envision in terms of activating this in the direction that each one of you want to see the city grow. How about changing the populace instead of adhering to them? Like, in this room, with, uh, changing you the what? Populace instead changing. of adhering to them. You know, I was talking mostly about, you know, like, as far as you talked about uh, hiring promotional party people to do appropriate museums. Which I guess is okay to some extent, but the content has to be there. You have to actually, when you get there, you have to actually have Trina pull back and let the artwork or the content of the work. We, I, I invite you to come to the performance and review it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 no yeah. doubt, you know I will. Yeah, yeah. I just want to give this, this woman an opportunity to speak. Uh, well, we've kind of moved on. Right, but um, if you want to say, I, I teach at New World as well. Okay. Listening to the conversation about this problem of keeping artists in Miami, isn't it natural for young people to leave home oh, yes. and come back? I mean, when you started talking about that, you, you went to New York, left, and came back. So, so there is a kind of um, evolution that happens outside of all of these questions that have to do with just the nature. But perhaps a positive change is being that, able yeah. to allow young people to come from other places to that's, come here. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. really... That's another issue altogether. And Michael. Uh, I guess kind of going based off of that would be like, how do you also recruit people to come here? Because yeah. we all know 9 out of 10 artists in LA are not from LA. 9 out of 10 artists yeah. in New York are not from New York, sure. right? Yeah. But yeah. there is a scene, it's, there is something pulling them, you know, and it's not... I mean, maybe it's commercial galleries, and that might be a large part of it, but I think a lot of it comes down to the onus on the artist, right? Like, it's, I, I know real estate's expensive, and but I think this is really admirable and rad that you're running something out of your apartment, and I 
rarely hear about something like that, but when I go to cities like New York, LA, Chicago, that have vibrant art scenes, like, the artists are really pushing the dialogue, you know, and the, they're, they're bringing the audience. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that's something, and, and it might kind of relate also to this sort of, like, handout mentality, which is, like, well, like, someone should really run a residency, or someone right, should really yeah. run a school. Just do it it's like, you know what, like, do it someone just yeah. has to fucking do it, you know? I'm going to say two then. more things, and I'm going to shut up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think they should le legalize marijuana. Okay, right. <laughs> and <laughs> stop banning words on climate change. I mean, it's real simple. It's, just like, it's a bigger <laughs> picture uh, than uh, art. In, in the back over there? I'm not even going to talk about art senior. also lived in LA and it being such a university centered city there's so many art schools in Los Angeles that discourse is like paramount there and it's really part of the fabric of the city and the identity of it and so yeah I think you know the reason I pointed to Gene before and the program that he's working on is that I think that feeding into models such as that one can help bridge this gap that we have between this like focus on party or whatever you that you know there's discourse now yeah, of course there's always discourse happening i'm just saying in order to organize the discourse in something that um that people can participate in on a regular basis and that can elevate and then create more hopefully like critical dialogue through communications and things like that and connect the city but if there's anyone else that has 10 seconds uh one thing that really drew people to la in the past 10 years would be being able to attend really great schools for cheap, UCLA, USC used to be free. Now they're retracting all of that. So, so like, could draw so people like, here. you know, like the idea of like, oh, I'm gonna get my MFA for free, no longer the case. So like, maybe that is a way for cities like Miami to kind of slip in the door, right? If someone wants to start their own MFA and go through all the fucking bureaucracy. Well, why why so, start in, in a vacuum? Why not put it in one of the universities we have here, or both of them? Right. Right. Because don't. Don't reinvent the wheel. No. Well, there, there was an initiative. But then you have to, that's there, like, yo, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough. You know, like, that's not going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, I miss that. You're well, not yeah. going to, like, go to, like, the head of the of UM or FIU and say, like, that professor, that professor, that professor, that but, professor. But Craig Robbins, Robbins was doing that yeah, pre the recession. He's, he's there was, also trying to, like, accredit it, which is, like, the I know. I'm just saying, there have been, there have been initiatives already set in the past. Like, in 2007, there was an initiative to do an MFA, some program out of the University of Miami. Other people might know about more than I do, but um, it was halted with the recession. Okay. So I don't know what the next phase of that, I don't know if that plan is on the back burner for another time or whatever, but there are... So if you had a, if you had a new program, forgive me, with new professors, you know, little good people, some professors, whoever, are teaching ready at the level, at the, at the undergrad level, and introduce, even in a small way, in a genesis of a way, you start a program with a big name university. Or a big, or, or like a, a big name school. artist, or yeah. you look at the Whitney Independent Program, or yes. you look at these alternative schools that are able to attract 
the names because at the end of the day, all you want is to study with John Paul Sartre. Yeah. You don't want to. He's Absolutely. only there like one day. Yeah. Right. Right. And, but I'm saying like you want to say that. You yeah. That's that a model that works. You so have big it, name you know. artists and critics and students from all over the world want to come study with them. That's what attracts people to UCLA okay. so, to work with know. like Yvonne Rayner or you there's like a piece of paper. You, yeah, you want to work with specific yeah. people under like their like mentorship, which is like why a art program would exist in the first place because there's not really anything to learn outside of a otherwise you'd go to like a craft school or something. And of course right? that's not to say that's all we need like those specialized programs that have the big name artists giving the the small intimate critique like that's just a piece of the education puzzle so while that is happening then FIU is upping their game and while you know so these yeah. things are happening but instead. How does this model curtail the market? Yeah. Wait, wait. What do you mean by curtailing the market? How does this big name artist school curtail? Does it? Oh, okay. Fair to your it, question, Jane. So. Would it not give confidence to the? Well, I mean, here? I mean, I think. So Brian Holmes is going to teach with. with he's going to come teach at our, our place. I think Brian Holmes is an immense name. He just won't do anything for your art career. <laughs> but not immediately. So there isn't well, that much but interest. These aren't, these aren't immediate. These aren't like people don't go to study with with Baldessari because of as because a direct of market, because right? of the market necessarily. Go ahead. Go to UCLA or went to UCLA in the nineties and two thousands because they're very. I markets. don't. I that's not the experience that I. That's not. I don't think it's a universal experience. Okay. I mean, uh, I think to some degree. Majority. Do you agree on. with that universal experience? I mean, clearly, it's not enough to just fly in famous people to give lectures and then fly them out. It's there's more to, more than that. Also, I think the young people are more altruistic than that, guys. Maybe later on in life we get jaded, but at the beginning of life we start interested yeah. in the art form. Man. I mean, I really wanted to study at the Whitney program, and it wasn't because I wanted to make money. I re I really wanted to study there. But that's not a program that you align with capital. With money, you know? Right, exactly. So, but those, neither, there are the huge mouse, names teaching in that program. That yeah, but yeah. here's, a, here's but, the thing: you have Gene Reno. He has a program that attracts people from outside. Sure. Right, right, right. And he's actually speaking against it to some extent. Well, I'm just. I'm, well, I guess oh. what I'm saying is that there's ways to do it. There's two different ways. So, so yeah, you go to the Whitney Independent, and there maybe it's against capital. It's not against cultural capital. Sure. That's where you built it, right? Of course. So, so what I'm saying is. Um, it's not about building a program that has these names because those programs are very market bound in some way. And if you look at the faculties of all the programs that are in the 2000s were super hot, they're just a collection of very market successful artists. And they might be great teachers. Um, but, but that's not why you go there as a 25 year old. You already know enough. I, don't, I think people do go to school to study with a specific person. I mean, I, that, I don't know, from the New World, maybe you can speak to that. If you think, what are your what students you thinking when they're leaving high school? Um, you know, it's, they're looking at school, not, not Yeah, they're looking at recommendations. But you, they're going to college, not MFA, right? They're going to college, they're not going to MFA programs. Oh, no, we're going to art schools, actually, not to universities. No, no, I mean, like, I guess it's like a difference of level. So it's like, are they graduating yes. high school to go to college? Because in college, you wouldn't know yet. But after you're in college and you're going to go to a master's program, you know right. who you want to study with. But with a specific person, right? Right. But I think that those people that are teaching at these specific institutions makes an institution like I all have to say is I went to that place. Like if you have these great teachers going to Cannonball, it's gonna create desire for them just to go to Cannonball, even if they're not there anymore. And yeah, that, the I feel like isn't that based on how that would slot you in the art market. Right. Well, a, because it gives you confidence as an artist if you remain here and you suddenly work and you study there, it gives you better. If we think that we're going to get pure intention out of any of this stuff, it's, it's a kind of utopian goal. I think that we need to, what we need to think about is, how, okay, if you bring a big name to Cannonball, even if that's not your, your ultimate goal is feeding into the market, you are. You're building, you're building the name of your school, you're building the desirability of people coming there, and eventually that will have like residual kind well, of effect on the school. That's so, not the objective of what you're so, so, we, of the person, so we started sure. with, with Craig Robbins School as a model, right? And that was a, that was a school that was going to be run by Liam Gillick and Rick Ritt and all these guys who were going to fly in for a day. 
they're not generating new knowledge. But certainly not about city and probably not about anything at this point. So, so if that's the model and if that's what we want to create an MFA program about, then but kids you might could, as well go to Yeah, but also, Gene, like Hito Styro was the best teacher I ever had, and now she's a big-name person. So you can also get a big-name person who's an incredible teacher. Well, also someone who's willing to invest not only a day or a couple of days for a short seminar, but, but to live yeah. there for a full semester and teach, just, and, be that that teach and be that studio person that is working with you, doing critique for <coughs> several months for a year. I mean, that's, where the, that's why people really put value on those programs. And I mean, I think what Gene's doing is super, super rad, but maybe one hole that I see would <laughs> no, no, uh, uh, one hole would be that it is, it's, it's uh, tailored toward the local, right, to use that term. So like, and I, and I really do think a, a huge part of like building, if we are going to add to the scene, is how do we get more people here? So if, if there's a program. It's a great program, place to be. And yeah. I mean, a thing like the Mount School or Whitney is like, yeah. it draws people here if they stay for a little bit of time. Sure, maybe 90% of those people leave, but maybe right. some retain, right? And then you kind of have this thing that That's also a start. It's really the first no, for real sure. staff at alternative school huge, here. Yeah. And it's, you know, we have to start so, Something that I was thinking about, which I don't know if you guys have thought about in developing the kind of like curricula for your program, like before I even moved back here, I was like, wouldn't it be great to start, because oh, I have a lot of issues with the Whitney program too, in terms of like a Marxist sort of, like a kind of outdated uh, discourse mm -hmm. and also focusing so on such Eurocentric theories, right? So I was thinking like, what if Miami had a school that was focused on like the Southern hemisphere for the like critiques and the artists and stuff, because it would make it so site specific to our, geographical location that it would oh, you know to that no, point I wanted to yeah, say so also so. to um, so last um, summer uh, there was a conference called the 950 summit which was this wonderful grouping together <coughs> of all the, the nine of the southernmost states um, and all the contemporary art centers and institutions that were in those states and came together at a conference at the um, Atlanta Contemporary Art Center and not that that's exactly what you're talking about yeah. it was a really great start and there was all these great discussions about regionalism and it was funded by the Warhol Foundation and it was just a um, I think it was a really interesting start at that and trying to look at the southernmost states and, and trying to both define regionalism and then create sort of a center for this kind of dialogue. 